uh, we have discussed that the most important aspect of open cast mining is the, the uh, slope, uh, stability. slope slope stability slope stability okay so let us uh, see so these are the some of the things we have discussed uh, slope stability also we have discussed Open pit slope failures is because of the structural problems. Water damage, what happens when water accumulates in the mines? That also we have discussed. Open pit slope failure, case studies of some mines. So, uh, in open cast mining, uh, So uh, this also we have how to calculate the stripping ratio, calculate the value of stripping ratio. If a mining company says that during the year, during the year, uh, uh, 5.4 million tons of material was mined and that the meal processed was 2.1 million tons. So from this, you can calculate the stripping ratio, which is equal to five point total amount of mining material minus amount of mill processed divided by amount of mill processed. So that will give you the stripping ratio. So in this case, 5.4 minus 2.1 divided by 2.1 is equal to 1.57. So stripping ratio is 1.57. So the open pit mining, we have seen that it refers to a method of extracting the rock or minerals from the earth through their removal from an open pit or burrow. So the sometimes also you go for mountain top removal mining, which is a form of coal mining or iron ore mining that uses explosives to blast the over button off the top of some Appalachian mountains. In India, the coal mining is uh, coal deposits are usually bedded deposits, but in some places, the coal also occurs at the top of the hill mountains. Like mountains. So uh, we have also seen these are some of the open pit mining methods practiced in different parts of the globe. So so today, today we are going to discuss today's class. We are going to discuss about terrace mining. This is a method of mining. Terrace mining is a method of mining where the overburden is too thick. The overburden is very, very thick or the floor of the pit. The ore inclination is also steeply dipping. So if the Overburden is very thick and the floor of the pit uh, inclination is deeply dipping to allow waste dumping directly over the pit, as is the case with a dragline mining or strip mining. So strip mining or dragline mining. So what is done? You remove the overburden and after that, that waste material is to be uh, dumped. The waste material is to be dumped on the decold area from where the mineral is already taken out. So you have to dump the waste materials in the decold area, which is called your strip mining or dragline mining. It is necessary to use intermediate cyclic or continuous transport trucks or conveyors to transport transport the overburden to where it can be tipped back into the previously mined void. So 
in the case of terrace mining uh, what you are doing uh, the overburden material which is uh, lying on the top of the mineral deposit is to be removed and that overburden material uh, will be used for reclamation purpose by dumping on the pit itself from where the mineral is already taken out so that is called your so this method of mining terrace mining is applicable or suitable where the overburden is too thick overburden is very very thick or the floor of the pit the ore inclination is too steeply dipping dipping uh, uh, deposits to allow waste dumping to allow waste material dumping directly over the pit as practiced in the case of drag line mining and strip mining therefore it is necessary to use intermediate cyclic or continuous transport methods like your trucks or conveyors to transport the overburden to where it can be tipped back into the previously mined out void so the void which is created after mining and the minerals can be filled up by the overburden material that is why it is called your terrace mining or strip mining or drag line mining uh, also so it is a multi benched sideways moving method the whole mine moves over the ore reserve from one end of the deposit to the other end but not necessarily in a single bench there may be number of benches in the uh, mine the number of benches used is usually a function of the excavation depth at what depth you are going to mine and type of machinery used for the purpose typically uh, it is between 10 to 15 meter bench height the bench height is kept 10 to 15 meter and, and there may be 1 to 32 benches in the terrace so where uh, steeply dipping or bodies are encountered if the deposit is very steep the modified method is most often applied a more typical three west bench terrace operation with steeply dipping ore body in this case the pit dimensions are limited by seam exposure how much the coal seam is exposed to the surface and the pit length and available working area how much area is available for mining and dumping uh, faces and the pit width so uh, types of surface mining are strip mining is one of them is strip mining strip mining so it is the practice of mining a seam of mineral by first removing a long strip of overlying soil and rock which is called your overburden so first you have to remove the overburden to expose the mineral deposit and after that uh, after that uh, the uh, uh, after removing the overburden you have to remove the minerals so it is most commonly used to mine the coal deposits or the tar sand deposits so strip mining is only practicable when the ore body to be excavated is relatively near to the surface strip mining can be practiced where the mineral deposit is lying at a shallower depth so here you just see in this diagram this is called the strip mining method this is the strip mining method this is the drag line this machine is the drag line so what this drag line is doing it is removing the overburden the top overburden material is uh, mined to expose the coal deposit then the coal this coal deposit is taken by the shovel and the dumper uh, so after the coal is mined 
the waste material can be dumped in the decold area from where the coal is already taken out. So the the upper um, this upper layer is the overburden. Below that, your coal seam is there. Black one is your coal seam, and below that, your bedrock is there. Floor is there. Bedrock is there. So the uh, strip mining. Uh, so here, these are the uh, surface, uh, uh, the surface, and below that, your soil and overburden is there. So these soil and overburden is to be removed to expose the mineral deposit, the coal deposit. So uh, this uh, uh, strip mining method is the cheapest method and is the safest method, but can have a significant impact environmentally on the surface because the strip mining will be practiced for a large area. So the entire area will be uh, uh, pol Diluted or entire area will be devastated because of the deforestation. If it is lying in the forest area, you have to cut the trees. So environmentally, this method of mining is not uh, very good because a lot of dust will be there, water pollution, air pollution, noise, vibration will be there in the mining area. So therefore, this method is environmentally not suitable. But this method is very, very cheap method and very, very safe method. That is why people are using throughout the world the strip mining method. So why it is called strip mining? So you need, you, you see uh, the coal seam is a strip. Over that, overburden is another strip. So this strip, overburden is to be removed to expose the coal seam and after coal is exposed, the coal will be mined by the help of the shovel, loading machine and the dumper. So the dumper will the coal away from the mine to the processing plant, to the coal washing plant. And from where the coal is already taken out, from where the coal is already taken out, the drag line will dump the waste materials in that area so that the reclamation will go on simultaneously while when the mining is carried out the land reclamation will also be carried out simultaneously so that is called the strip mining so so why this strip mining is used because the ore is close to the surface the coal seam is very close to the surface. It is a shallow deposit. Uh, the ore or the coal is very close to the surface of the land, maybe 30 meter below the earth surface. Maybe the coal is lying at a depth of 30 meter, but has one or more layers of rock and dirt on top of it. Above the coal seam, there is a rock layer, overburden layer. To mine the ore, to mine the ore, these layers have to be taken off. So to get the coal, you have to remove this overburden layer. Okay, so after removing the overburden layer only, you can mine the coal seam. So therefore, this mining is done in long, narrow strips. This is the length of the face, long, very long and narrow strips. When the ore is done, in one strip. After mining the ore or coal from one strip, the miners begin to create another strip next to it. So after mining this strip, then second strip will be taken. Uh, next strip, the waste material, overburden material, dirt material, and the rock that they take off of the top of the next strip is put on top of the last one, put on, on the last one from where the coal is already taken out. So this is called your strip mining method. So the strip mining method is used uh, uh, in this fashion. Uh, these are the machines used for strip mining. One is your drag line. You can also 
use the bucket wheel excavator. This is called your bucket wheel excavator uh, because they, this is a wheel over which there are number of buckets are there and it rotates. This bucket wheel excavator, the wheel rotates and cuts the rock. So this is called your bucket wheel excavator and this is called your drag line. This machine is called your drag line which is used mostly for strip mining method. And uh, these are the bucket chain excavators, bucket wheel excavators, and this is another drag line. OK, so these machines are used for strip mining operations. So this is called your strip mining. You see this in this example, strip by strip, one, one strip after another strip, you are mining the deposit, strip mining. Uh, so in the strip mining, uh, blasting is done, scoping of the rock or overburden is done, and after that, the scoped out material is um, uh, lying at a fairly shallow depth. So it is a, a economical strip mining depends on stripping ratio. If uh, less overburden is there, and uh, you'll have a less stripping ratio. If overburden depth is more, stripping ratio will be more. So if stripping ratio is more, strip mining method cannot be used. So the, this strip mining method also require large land area, can, uh, especially for coal and bauxite deposits. You see here the blasting is going on in this open pit mine and below the coal is, be take, coal is being taken out by loaded by the loading machine, the shovel. So the strip mining, uh, the, uh, for that purpose, how to calculate the stripping ratio? How to calculate the stripping ratio? So this is uh, 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 top one. This is the overburden. This is the overburden trees, other things are there. And after that, uh, uh, you means these trees overburden material is to removed uh, fast. So what is done? So this overburden material is taken out from the surface. Waste rock is taken out from the surface. Then after that, you get the ore. This red color is your ore. Green color is the uh, hedges, your grass, your top layer trees, uh, vegetation, and below that you are having the waste rock material. So below the waste rock material, you are having the ore or the mineral. So this mineral is mined uh, by the strip mining method. So how to calculate the uh, stripping ratio for this purpose? So the economics of strip mining depends on the stripping ratio how much overburden you are going to handle. For example, here you see figure number A. So H1 is the overburden, small H1 is the overburden you have to remove. And below that H2, small H2 is the coal seam lying below the overburden. So this H1 divided by H2 is the stripping ratio. H1, height of the overburden, divided by the height of the coal seam will give you the stripping ratio. This is uh, figure number A uh, for the bedded deposits, flat deposits. But if the coal seam is inclined, if the coal seam is inclined like this, so overburden H1, average overburden uh, depth H1 and, uh, uh, and height of the coal seam is H2. So here also the stripping ratio is H1 by H2. So this is the way you have to calculate the stripping ratio. So I have told that stripping ratio is nothing but the overburden uh, material divided by the coal or mineral. That will give you the stripping ratio. So this uh, strip mining method uh, is the practice of mining a coal seam of a mineral by first removing a long strip of overlying soil 
and rock the over burden first is to be removed so in any mining surface mining you have to remove the over burden first to expose the mineral deposit so it is most commonly used to mine coal or tar sand so strip mining is only practical practicable when the ore body to be excavated is relatively near to the surface so this type of mining uses some of the largest machines on the earth including bucket wheel excavators are also used which can move as much as 12000 cubic meters of earth per hour so in strip mining you can also the you can use the bucket wheel excavators or the drag lines which can move as much as 12000 cubic meters of overburden material per hour there are two forms of strip mining method the more common method is area strip mining and contour strip mining so the area strip mining area stripping which is used on fairly flat terrain if the deposit is flat then you can use the area strip mining to extract the deposit over a large area area is very large as each long strip is excavated the overburden is placed in the excavation uh, produced by the previous strip so while in the case of area strip mining the overburden material is removed first and the overburden which is removed is dumped over the void from where the mineral or coal is already taken out that is why this is called your uh, strip mining method uh, so another version of strip mining is contour strip mining uh, which involves removing the overburden above the mineral seam near the outcrop in hilly terrain hilly terrain if the deposit is lying in a hill so you have to use the contour strip mining where the mineral outcrop usually follows the contour of the land so contour strip mining is often followed by auger mining into the hill side to remove more of the mineral this method commonly leaves behind terraces in mountain sides so the contour strip mining involves removing the overburden above the mineral seam near the outcrop in hilly terrain where the mineral outcrop usually follows the contour of the land contour stripping is often followed by auger mining into the hill side to remove more of the mineral so this method is commonly leaves behind terraces in mountain sides so among other methods strip mining is used to extract the oil impregnated sand in the athabasca tar sands in alberta it is also common in coal mining strip mining is also very common to coal mining so bucket wheel excavators are widely used for this purpose however they are prone to damage and require many millions of dollars to repair so this is the basic fundamental of your strip mining two types of strip mining are there one is area strip mining contour strip mining so here in this diagram it is clearly ex clearly explained how what is called the strip mining method you you see this one this figure so uh, the top one this uh, green color is the top soil and below that this uh, gray color is your rock overburden rock and below that your coal is lying this is the black black portion is the coal 
and below the coal another over burden is there this gray color and below that again coal is there okay so there are two layers of coal here this is the top layer of coal this is the bottom layer of coal so this is called your contiguous seam more than one coal seam is there so what is done so uh, first you have to remove this soil material green soil material below that uh, the over burden is there this uh, rock is there so this rock is to be mined and this rock will be dumped uh, this rock will be dumped over the area here from where the coal is already taken out the coal is already taken out so this drag line digs this uh, over burden material and dumps in the area from where the coal is already taken out the cold area this area is called the cold area so simultaneously reclamation land reclamation is taking place so and this coal how you are taking the coal is mined by the shovel and dumper so by the help of this dumper the coal is taken to the coal handling plant coal washing plant so this is called the strip mining method the below figure you can see below figure you can see uh, after coal is already taken out after the coal is mined so you go for reclamation you uh, the land is reclaimed the land is reclaimed and again you can plant trees and uh, you can do the afforestation again in the trees will be planted to bring back the land to its original form so before mining there were trees uh, then after mining uh, you can again plant the trees to bring back the greenery of the area so after the coal is mined out the entire coal is taken out that area is to be reclaimed so this is called your reclamation so in the reclamation process you have to plant the trees uh, over the decolled area so that the original land surface can be brought back so that is called your reclamation the uh, government rule and regulations are there so after the mining is done the land should not be left barren it should be reclaimed reclamation should be carried out and trees should be planted in the mining areas to have a greenery uh, so here uh, it is explained very nicely in this diagram about strip mining so uh, the top in the top figure you can again refer so the top layer green layer graded embankment to act as baffle against noise and dust in mining areas lot of noise is generated dust is generated so you can have a embankment like this so that the noise and vibration and dust will not be permitted to move to the other part of the area where people are living so the top soil and soft soil usually uh, the mineral or the coal is overlain by there is a top soil which is a, a very fertile soil which uh, uh, allows growing of trees that is called the top soil fertile soil uh, having uh, nitrogen and phosphorus in its uh, um, top soil which uh, which um, helps for growing the plants so the top soil below the top soil there is a soft soil there is a soft soil is there which is stripped by motor scrapers and carefully stored so this green layer of uh, uh, top soil and soft soil is stripped by the help of a, a motor scraper and it is kept separately it is kept this green um, material is kept separately so after the mining is done after the coal is mined again you need 
these materials for the reclamation purpose for growing the plants. So uh, below the topsoil and subsoil, uh, you are having the overburden from benches dug by soils uh, and hauled by dump trucks. The overburden material, this uh, gray color overburden rock materials are mined by soil and hauled uh, by dump trucks. This material is uh, taken out uh, by the uh, dumper and uh, uh, so that the coal seam is exposed. Then this overburden, the second overburden, this is the top overburden, this is the second overburden uh, being excavated by the drag line. This is the drag line. This machine is called your drag line. It has got a very big boom. Boom length is very high, 100 meter, 200 meter boom length is there. So whatever material, uh, whatever overburden material it is mining, it is dumped at a great height uh, away from the coal seam so that the coal can be mined separately. So this overburden being excavated by the drag line, the spoil pile, this is the spoil pile. This, this pile is called your spoil pile, overburden pile. Uh, drag line bucket unloads the overburden on this uh, decoled area. Then after the mining is carried out, after the coal is mined out, then the drag line backfills and leveled by bulldozers. Leveling is done by bulldozers. Drag line will backfill the area and uh, uh, tipping overburden from benches to backfill the decoled area. Then subsoil and topsoil is to be replaced and shaped to plant the trees. So this is called your reclamation. This is the mining phase. This is the reclamation phase. So after the soils are replaced in their proper sequence, uh, after the soils are replaced in their proper sequence. So the uh, rock, after the rock, you have to put the subsoil. Above the subsoil, you have to give the topsoil. So after soils are placed in their proper sequence, they are uh, reaped to relieve uh, compaction and then cultivated. The trees are planted, lime is added and fertilizers are added so that the trees can grow again on the mining land. So this mining and reclamation is carried out simultaneously in the case of strip mining method. So uh, uh, this is called your area strip mining, area surface mining. So here you see in this diagram, this black portion is the coal. This black portion is the coal you are going to mine. And the uh, this is the overburden, soil, uh, overburden, rock. So what is done, this drag line machine, uh, this drag line machine, uh, remove this, removes this this overburden uh, material and dumps dumped on the reclaimed area. From this area, white version, the coal is already mined out. So the drag line removes this overburden and dumps on the decoled area, reclaimed area. So this is the drag line machine which is removing the overburden, and this is the drill machine, drilling after drilling blasting the overburden after blasting the drag line removes the overburden and dumps in the waste materials in the reclaimed area from where the coal is already taken out then after exposing the coal exposed coal is taken by the shovel and truck this is the shovel machine which loads the coal to the trucks and these trucks the coal, loaded coal trucks, they are taken to the coal washing plant, coal handling plant. And uh, after the coal is mined, this area is called your decoled area. After the coal is mined out, after the coal is taken out, you are getting the white 
that uh, portion which is called your decold area. So in the decold area, the waste material is to be dumped to be filled up, which is called your reclamation. So this is called area surface mining, area strip mining. So this is the schematic diagram of strip coal mines. This uh, first figure, this is the coal and this is the overburden. So this drag line, this drag line machine uh, gathers overburden and casts it back onto spoil banks located behind the current working phase. So drag line is used to uh, overcast the overburden materials in, into the decoded area. And this is the direct direction of advance. This strip, after taking out this strip, then you will go to the next strip. So that's what it is called your strip coal mining. Uh, so the significant permanent waste dumps are not needed in the case of a strip mining method. Mine rehabilitation can be carried out simultaneously. Reclamation can be carried out simultaneously, progressively at the same rate as mining. Mining is carried out and reclamation is also carried out simultaneously in the case of strip coal mining method. Here, the coal strip uh, is taken. This is the coal strip you are going to mine and above that the overburden is to be removed. And this is the area strip mine coal. So this is area strip mining practiced. Uh, so the coal is taken out and overburden material is dumped in the decoled area. So this is called your area strip mining method. So this strip mining uh, again explained here. So the this drag line means overburden and uh, uh, dumps on the ground from where you have already taken out the coal. OK. So the the uh, this the uh, this figure is the bucket will excavate also used for strip mining operations. OK. This is the diagram of a bucket wheel excavator. So as I have told, this wheel, this wheel contains number of buckets. So therefore, it is called your bucket wheel excavator. And this bucket wheel excavator, this wheel rotates in the uh, uh, rotates in the uh, uh, clockwise direction clockwise direction to cut the rock and remove it so large bucket wheel excavators are being moved through germany moves 10 meters per minute takes five people to operate the bucket wheel excavator and it is used for strip mining this bucket wheel excavator is used for strip mining operation. So the another method of mining is there. We have told that contour strip mining. It is applicable to hilly terrain deposits. Contour strip mining or contour strip mining in the form of benches. So this is the hill area, hilly area. OK, so uh, the coal is lying below. Above that overburden is there. So the, uh, in the hilly area, so the overburden depth is not constant. It goes and increasing as you go up and up, but the coal seam height is remaining the same. So the, this is the uh, contour strip mining is to be carried out like this. First you remove the overburden, after that you get the coal. Um, so this uh, uh, contour strip mining, the, this black one, this black one is the coal. So you can also use it. You can use the high wall mining for this type of less deposit. If the deposit is very thin, then you can go for high wall mining. You can go for high wall mining. So uh, in mining, in open cast mining, in open cast mining, uh, these are the processes carried out. Mining process in open cast mining. First, as I have told, there are four unit operations in every open cast mining drilling, blasting, loading, and transporting. Drilling, blasting, 
loading, hauling or transporting the materials. So there are four unit operations carried out in open cast mining. These are the various mining processes. So uh, in the case of if you are using the surface miner, if you are using the surface miner, you don't need drilling and blasting. The surface miner will cut the uh, material. And if you are using the drag line, if you are using the drag line, so it can load the material, it can haul the material, it can transport the material. So uh, uh, there is no need of separate operation. If you are using the surface miner, the surface miner uh, phase is not necessarily to be drilled and blasted. The surface miner can uh, work itself to cut the coal deposit. If you are using the drag line, the drag line can load the material, haul the material, and transport the material. So uh, uh, there is another method, in pit crossing and conveying. In pit crossing and conveying method, in the pit itself, the material can be crossed, and by the help of a conveyor, belt conveyor, the material can be transported. So uh, in open cast mining process, drill machines are used rotary drill machines, percussive drill machines are used, uh, explosives for blasting purpose, site mix slurry explosives are used for blasting purpose, emulsion explosives are used for blasting purpose, primers and non-electric detonators are used <coughs> for the blasting purpose. And for the loading purpose, you use the shovels and drag lines. And for hauling purpose, front end loaders you can use. And for the transportation purpose, you can use the dumpers, you can use the conveyors. And for washing the coal, coal washing or processing of the mineral is carried out by the coal washer. So this is the flow chart of mining process in open cast mining. So for uh, carrying out the mining operations, you have to select the mining equipment. The type of equipment uh, to be used in surface mining is selected on the basis of stripping ratio. In case of open cast mining, stripping ratio is very, very important ratio on the basis of which you have to select the mining equipment, which equipment will give you better performance. Then you have to also calculate the life of the mine. On the basis of the line, life of the mine, you have to select your equipment. Then uh, whether the infrastructure facility is available in the mining area or not, that is also to be looked into while selecting the mining equipments. And uh, how much mineral you are going to produce per year proposed annual output production from the mine on the basis of that, you have to select your mining equipment and what technology available in the market on the basis of that you have to select the mining equipments. So while selecting the mining equipment, you have to take into account the stripping ratio. And you have to also take into account the life of the mine. If the life of the mine is longer, if the life of mines is 100 years, 50 years, then you can invest bigger type of machines. If the life of the mine is short, like your five years, 10 years, or 20 years, then you cannot go for high capacity machines, high costing machines. You have to go for smaller machines, machines and equipments. And uh, uh, whether in that area infrastructure available or not, like your roads and railway lines and other infrastructures, are available in the area or not, that is also to be looked into while selecting the mining equipments. And how much uh, production you are going to uh, get or what is your proposed annual output? How much mineral you want to produce annually? So if you want to produce more mineral, then you have to select bigger type of machines. If you want, if your production is less, if you want to produce less mineral, 
smaller type of equipment are to be selected and uh, the technology available what type of technology available in the market like your uh, surface miner technology ripper dozer technology drag line technology shovel dumper technology so what type of technology available in the market on the basis of that you have to select your mining equipments so uh, in open cast mines there are different type of machines used uh, for example shovel and dumper mining if you are using the shovel and dumper mining so you have to purchase the shovel machine and dumper uh, for transportation purpose shovel is used for loading purpose dumper is used for transportation purpose then if you are using the drag line so the drag line can overcast the material so there is no need of dumper the drag line itself can dump the waste materials at a greater distance in the decoded area so there is no need of any dumper if you are using the drag line and if you are using the surface miner if you are using the surface miner here also there is no need of drilling and blasting and loading is also ne not necessary the surface miner will carry out all the operations similarly if you are using the bucket wheel excavator here also uh, uh, you may not need drilling blasting and transportation the bucket wheel excavator is having a spreader by the help of which it is also having the belt conveyors the material can be transported and if you are using the in pit crossing and spreading so in the pit itself you have the crossing machine will be there and spreading machine will be there so these are the technologies available in open cast mining like your shovel dumper mining drag line mining surface miner mining bucket wheel excavator mining in pit crossing and spreaders um mining in pit crossing and conveying methods so uh, in the uh, next class we are going to discuss about the glory hole mining glory hole mining so next class uh, we'll discuss about glory hole mining so tomorrow there will be no class tomorrow friday there will be no class uh, Uh, because of the makar sankranti and pongal so i wish all of you a very happy makar sankranti and pongal celebration um, so today is this much have a nice day good luck to you all of you thank you thank you sir thank you sir makar sankranti sir thank you sir thank you thank you Have a nice day. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and uh, so that again we'll meet in the next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.